Everaz Highveld Steel and Vanadium has reported a return to profit for the six months to the end of June. Everaz said that the local market remained overstocked and it was uncertain how fast demand would return once inventory levels had stabilized. International steel prices are expected to weaken and Everaz Highveld's domestic steel sales volumes for the period rose 2% compared with 2010. Export steel sales volumes increased 51% with overall steel sales volumes increasing 13%. A market cap of 4.2 billion price earnings, 110, 110 because they took a loss last year. No dividend played. Drickers, let's start with you. Uh, Lenny was saying, I mean, exports up 51 percent, although South Africa is 77 uh, percent of the market. Mm. Uh, local production, domestic was off 2 percent. But there's still broadly a glut out there. And, and what we're seeing, and I was looking at some charts from, from, in fact, from their website, what we're seeing is production ramping up around the world uh, and we've got too much of it already. Well, actually, what I'm hearing from the industry throughout the metals industry, not, not necessarily this one in particular, is there's a lot of smelters shutting down across the country, you know, in the northern hemisphere as well. So I won't get too carried away with all the smelters, all the capacity coming, coming out at the moment. And they did mention a week of third quarter. What did impress me is what these guys have achieved between the bottom line and the top line. You know, there's a lot of efficiency. Um, been, been, been sought out and the company has done tremendously well um, by, by extracting that extra amount of margin, turning things around. But at the end of the day, I don't think even that justifies the price that we, we're trading at the moment. Okay, so listen, give us your sense because we know steel is a very tough industry and input costs, energy costs, biggest issue. And, uh, and as Jacob said, we, we even have this worldwide, we had blue scope steel coming out from Australia and saying, you know, we nearly closed down totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that shocked that market quite significantly. And certainly we're hearing this in a number of places. But, you know, to me, that is the steel game. You know, honestly, when times are going, you've got to run at full bore. Uh, you, you can't even take time off. You've got to keep this thing going. Uh, you know, you tool up for that. You, you make sure that all the bits and pieces are in place. And then suddenly, somewhere along the line, you know, other people come on stream and then it's, you know, beware the, 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 the highest cost producer. But I just want to look at the, at the numbers. And excuse me if I look down at my screen, but I just thought I had to, had to bring this. I mean, yeah. the, the, the statement is, is just, it begs description. I haven't actually got the answer to this. But everything looks about the same as you go along, give or take. Except suddenly you get a thing called here, other operating expenses slash income. And it was negative in the quarter to June, and it was a negative a, a little bit less in the same quarter a year ago. It was a negative in the half year um, uh, to June 2010, and it was extremely negative in the year to 30th of December. But it was positive, like 80 million. So in the corresponding period a year, a year ago, the operating expenses were negative 26 million, and in this period they were positive 80 million. Now, it certainly wasn't in the latest quarter when it was minus 48. So there's a 120 million number that is non-repeatable, non-anything that comes into this half year that makes it look good. So I just say I don't care what the rest of the uh, description of this company is. Uh, it's stand aside. That is not repeatable. It's not coming back. And if we've made a profit this half, we're not going to make one next. So, yeah. uh, you know, whatever else you want to tell me, I'm going to stand aside until they can explain to me how they can either get that fixed or how they can make it uh, get a repeat number on that one. Uh, I'm just saying my, my uh, modeling going forward has a negative on that line. And with that, they will not make a profit in the next half year. Yeah, Drekas, you raised a good point. When we mm. take that number out, things aren't so rosy. They talk about uh, Q3 of 2011, uh, output re reduced output expected strikes and shutdowns. If we look at the numbers and we break it into two halves, Q2 was not as good as Q1, or that mm. might have been Liston's magic number there. The green scorpions are knocking on the door. Ouch. Definitely, we're seeing the PMR figures come down on PMI and the steel industry normally goes very much close hand in hand. When the PMI is close to 15 in the developing world, or excuse me, in, in your bigger markets, then uh, you, you don't necessarily want to be in the steel industry. Then you want to be the lowest cost producer. Yeah? It's, that's what it's all about. Um, looking at the bigger picture, 
I felt is 85% owned by Everest, mm -hmm. or well, half of the Everest. Same with ArcelorMittal. Do you really want to be the owner of a puppet state? You know, you In other words, they could, the parent could decide, because often it's viewed as being a good thing. The parent could decide, we've got too much production worldwide, we need to shut down, let's do South Africa. Let's do South Africa, mm -hmm. at the expense of those shareholders and at the benefit of the larger shareholder, of the oh, shareholder of, the, of, of the, the parent, parent of the group. Then it brings the question, can we actually produce steel profitably in South Africa? Well, we should. We've got <laughs> all the raw materials here. Yeah, we've but still it's not evident in the, the numbers, even from ArcelorMittal. Well, even that, is, still that is the question. These guys aren't lean and mean enough. Okay. That, that is the bottom line. Maybe you would like to tackle that question, Liston. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, I think it's been around for an awfully long time. Uh, and if you remember, the, uh, the original ISCO uh, lost money in, 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 in many, many, many years. Finally, was listed. Eventually, uh, you know, uh, made some money. Was eventually bought by Tata. I, I just don't know that we can compete. But I guess again, I just make the point that you know this is a high volume business, but it's not easy transporting steel around the world. You, you, you know, you you still ultimately need to have some domestic ability to uh, uh, to turn it into something that you do want, if it's coming in some kind of of, of raw form that is more easily transportable. So th the honest answer is uh, I, I don't know that we can do it the way we are, are configured. Uh, it's a big employer. It really needs to uh, be debated at a, at a very high level and find out exactly what it is that is stopping it. And again, you don't have to look further than you know the uh, Arcelor Mittal Kumba spat. You yeah. know to say, well, you know we've got the iron ore. How come we can't provide yeah. it to ourselves cheaply? But if we've got to pay import parity pricing for the thing, then yeah. then we you know we're dead on our feet because. We're paying the import parity at, at the cost level. Yeah. How can we ever make a profit if we're, we're then forced to sell, uh, a, you, you know, with, with, with all the add-ons and the, and the unknowns yes. in particular, uh, you know, higher energy costs to, to make it work. Okay. So I think, uh, you know, I think, sorry to say, you, you yeah. know, this, this question we're running out of time. suddenly on me, yeah. but I think you're onto a very, very big thing here that yeah. this one really does need a bigger and a national debate. On, this, uh, on the ability of, uh, of steel to actually make a go of it in this country. Okay, Drick, is hot or not? Not hot. At all? No. Nah. Simon, hot or not? No, not hot. Uh, too much, too much not good. <laughs> so listen, I know that you usually pick a hot stock out of the three companies that we discuss, and you said not hot for Advertech. You said maybe hot, well, not really for the likes of Northam. And I assume that then this is your hot stock pick, or am I wrong? <laughs> no, you're wrong. No, I don't <laughs> so like this one at all. <laughs> okay, very quickly, tell me, what is your hot stock and, pick? And I have to say, this is the first time I've had it on one of the shows <laughs> where there's none of the three that I like. You're going to go with cash. <laughs> so I'm going to have to pick the least worst, and we'll pick that up as we, as we go along. Okay, so Northern, is it? It's Northern for me, yeah. Okay. And the reason is simply because there is some potential for growth going forward, yeah. and that is the Boysendahl uh, uh, project. And if you start to say, well, let's take out the value for that and let's see what they're doing on the other side. And then again, uh, yeah. you know, just looking, if they don't have another 65 uh, lost days, uh, you know, you can see some improvement. So yeah. as I said, of, of all of them, I would Northern. give that one the benefit of having some chance. But the biggest thing that yeah. is driving me to make that recommendation is in fact the price, yeah, exactly. which has come back down okay. to about 32 Rand. So eventually, you know, if all the bad news is pretty well encapsulated in the price, then you have to say, well, yeah. you know, you could buy that one with less fear. Listen, I have to interject. Okay, um, Drick, is your hot stock pick? Well, I have to choose something differently. EOH, <laughs> <laughs> earnings are growing rapidly. Uh, compound annual growth rate of earnings about 20 to 25% lost over the last 10 years. Can't see that changing over the next 10 years. Strong balance sheet is going to make a few acquisitions in the coming years. Which As many say is the problem. Just like me, just me. Simon <laughs> and Anthony Durham, actually. Me and Anthony Durham. Well, if you, if you do it, like PEs are. of three and four, it's fine. You know, um, oh. And they're doing it on an earn-out basis. So it, it eliminates a lot of the, the, the risks. And they're doing it with a very strong balance sheet. They're doing it out of cash. Um, so I see a lot of earnings growth coming out there. Still, aside of the acquisitions, there's still organic growth coming through. And it's becoming the IT services firm of choice at the moment in SA. So... Still not hot for you, EOH. Simon. I don't like the acquisitions, but I'm, I'm a loner on that, I admit. <laughs> okay, so that's it for Hot Stocks. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me today, and thank you for joining us. Uh, and, of course, a big thank you to our guests, Listen Manchus from Abercrombie Investment Management, and Drikas Combrick from PSG Consult. From me, Lenny Jokos, and Simon Brown from Just One Lap, it's goodbye.